first six months of 2022 behind us, it's time to take a stock of what's happening in India's office market, which has been an investor's darling. Now, while the sector's just about stabilized from the pandemic onslaught, and it now faces a fresh set of headwinds, inflation, which makes every company look for ways to cut costs and bringing down office rents is one of them. News of layoffs among startups and IT companies has started to come in. And an economic growth slowdown is already visible globally. How resilient will India's office market be going forward? Joining me to answer that question, Nirupa Shankar, Executive Director at Brigade Group. We also have with us Ramesh Nayal, CEO Colliers India, and Gagan Randev, Executive Director, India Sadhvi's International Realty. Nirupa, I'm going to ask you the question first because I'm sure you're looking at leasing numbers on a daily basis, weekly basis, and fortnightly basis. <laughs> Are you bracing yourself for challenging times and office leasing demand and a pressure on rentals in these inflationary times? Thanks for having me, Manisha, and hello to everybody. Uh, don't say that just yet. You know, we've just come out from two years of a really tough time and we're not ready for another slowdown. Um, you know, honestly, we've had a great uh, first quarter for FY23. It's been extremely encouraging. And I think um, the numbers have been um, extremely encouraging from what has happened in the past two years. Mm -hmm. It's the highest uh, leasing numbers we've had in the past eight quarters. So we're all bracing ourselves for a very resilient FY23. Uh, yes, there is talks of slowdown across the globe. Of course, there's macroeconomic conditions like the Russia-Ukraine war. Uh, but quite frankly, we are seeing a lot of our tenants, uh, you know, planning for the year ahead, planning for their expansion, planning for their growth. There are certain sectors, uh, you know, that have really benefited or come out stronger post-COVID, whether it's pharma companies, whether it's IT services companies, financial services companies. And they're all looking to expand their portfolio. They're all looking to get their employees back into work. Uh, everybody's making plans for their future expansion. So, quite frankly, we're very bullish on the year ahead. All right. That's good to know. Ramesh, then over to you. You know, you came out with a report saying that the trend uh, has been for eight quarters of rising office vacancies. But in Q1 of 2022, that's been broken for the first time. And Nirupa says that leasing has never been better uh, as in Q1 2022 since the pandemic. Now, my question is that it's sort of stabilized at 18 and a half percent. That's what we saw in the December quarter as well. Isn't that still too high a number? I mean, the industry, at least the top one would expect that, you know, nine to 10 percent is the sort of number one would be comfortable at. Manisha, when uh, the various property consultants uh, report vacancy, uh, we should also remember that uh, there is around eight, 10 percent of space uh, which is going to remain uh, vacant forever. This could be uh, things which are strata sold, not well maintained buildings, old buildings. So those that seven to ten percent structural vacancies available in most markets. If you look at established markets like let's say Mumbai or Delhi, so that will uh, continue. But coming back to the other part of uh, your question, uh, Manisha, is office space has uh, shown a lot of resilience. We saw that thirteen million square feet of office absorption in the first quarter, and like uh, what Nirupa said, uh, that kind of numbers we don't see that often. And uh, the second quarter numbers are not yet come, but I just checked with my research head, uh, what is the trend showing it'll be out in the next few days. It's again, looking like a very strong second quarter. Mm -hmm. So uh, we believe it may come even close to a 13 million square feet mark again, which will take it to 36, uh, 26 million square feet in the first uh, two uh, quarters, if you're able to meet that kind of uh, numbers. And we should remember that last year, we saw the office absorption go up to around 33 million square feet, which was like a 10% uh, year on year uh, growth, the full uh, full year. And uh, Pan India absorption in 2021, uh, it actually surpassed the average annual absorption between 16 and 18 by around 7%. So mm -hmm. I know 19 was a blockbuster year where we saw the 46 million, but 16 to 18, we saw a very steady year, uh, years and uh, real estate was uh, growing. One thing which is uh, important and uh, Nirupa also kind of uh, touched on that is India may not end up in a recession, but any slowdown of uh, the global economy or the global or the US economy uh, will obviously have an impact uh, on uh, India. I know the next two, three months we'll use terms like uh, decoupling. 
and uh, very soon forget about it because we would have been impacted if something happens at a global or at a US level. There are two very important points here, Manisha. First is US recession will uh, impact US corporations. US corporations spend a lot on IT. Right. Uh, which could obviously impact the U.S. Uh, IT uh, outsourcing industry, which means our Indian IT uh, outsourcing industry. Uh, we need to remember that 60% of Indian IT exports uh, go to U.S. So mm -hmm. that's very important. But the good good point here is close to if, if there is inflation in uh, U.S. and in the West and in Europe. Now, there's going to be inflation led wage hike pressure in these countries. And that lead to IT jobs continuing to move to India. And that's what I'm most bullish of. India already has around 1,400 global in-house centers, a global capability centers, what we call GICs and GCCs. This 1,400 number is expected to grow to around the 2,000 uh, uh, mark number. And these guys will, uh, will drive uh, office demand in the country going uh, forward. We shouldn't forget, uh, okay. Manisha, again, that last year we saw close to $83 billion of FDI come into the country. And a lot of this FDI obviously translates uh, into good office space demand. Interesting. Ramesh, what you're saying is that there are two factors at play. We shouldn't overly worry about the slowdown in the United States of America because that pretty much means that you could have more offshoring and global captive centers here back in India. Gagan, would you agree? Because what I can see is that rents have also been increasing in the top six cities slowly and steadily over the last eight quarters. No, no I, I would definitely agree with Ramesh and not only for the reasons that he mentioned. So, you know, everything was very logical and pertinent. But I think what is going to happen is as you get into a slowdown in the U.S., you are going to see an even bigger uh, effort on part of U.S. companies to cut costs. Now, one of the big elements of costs is people and where do you house people in offices? Uh, when you compare India average uh, US one, uh, USD 1.1 per square foot versus, uh, you know, I, I would say about 7 to $8 in the U.S. versus 8 to $10 in Singapore and Hong Kong versus $5 in Shanghai, uh, you know, India is a logical place to come to. And I honestly see this more as a positive in the next couple of years for uh, the Indian IT, IT com uh, companies. Now, the second thing, uh, the question, Marisha, you asked about passing rents. Now, I would take a little bit of the passing rents increase uh, in the last couple of quarters with a little bit of pinch of salt because what has happened is a lot of the renewals, a lot of agreements have, uh, have been done uh, with a little bit of adjustment. That means what you've done is against a traditional agreement where you were having a, uh, say, a 9 in agreement where the first three years was at 100 rupees per square foot. What you, what you now uh, have done is you may have a situation where the rent now is 90 rupees, but they have structured the agreement so that there's a rent-free period at the beginning or every year for the term of the lease. So what it's effectively doing is keeping the headline rental slightly higher, but the effective rental is actually lower. So barring a couple of markets, I would say that the rentals have remained steady, but uh, uh, agreements have been structured in such a way that... Uh, the passing rent seems to be increasing by about 2-3%. Okay. Uh, and that is really that is really the truth of the matter. Mm -hmm. All right. So, as you said, I mean, and we'll just flash this graphics, what the rents are in India for office space. Uh, and, you know, this is a blended rate of any market. So, MMR Mumbai region is at about 122 rupees per square feet. And if you translate that into dollars, it's one and a half dollars per square feet. And that's what Gagan was mentioning, that we are still very, very competitive. NCR is at 87 rupees. Bengaluru is at 76 rupees. Chennai, 65. Hyderabad, 60. And Pune, 73 odd uh, rupees per square feet. Nirupa, you know, I buy that, but you know, just just to play the devil's advocate here, you one is also so you're getting news of a Baiju's taking large floors plate in Bengaluru. You have the news of, you know, MasterCard taking up an entire office from Brookfield and Pune. But then there's news crawling in saying ten thousand staff have been laid off by 27 startups, you have a NASCOM report saying that top IT companies are likely to let go of about 3 million people in 2022. Uh, robots are going to take up their jobs. But I mean, how do you look at all these things together and say, 
what is to be worried about and what is news that you must just ignore so i think both aspects are true right i think there are some industries that are doing well and some that are not and you know in the startup world uh, the fact of the matter is 80% of them are likely to fail over a certain period of time however the kind of companies that are hiring you know it services financial services uh, they are hiring in lakhs if you talk to any recruitment firm you know they are saying they are handing out like 80000 uh offer letters every month maybe 40000 of those actually get accepted and move on but uh the fact of the matter is a lot of recruitment is happening in it services pharma companies uh financial services the large uh, fortune 500 companies are definitely expanding they are your uh, blue chip tenants and uh, you know there are some casualties in the um domestic startup world but by and large they're sort of offsetting each other Uh, the it services industry is i think currently the revenue that the indian it services industry gets is close to maybe 227 billion and that's expected to go up to 350 billion uh, in the next 4 to 5 years according to nasdaq as well so mm-hmm. all that comes with uh, additional recruitment additional requirement for office space so it's a full cycle and i think in this particular cycle there will be some companies that uh will have to sort of let go uh, some of their stuff but net net i think there's a large uh, amount of recruitment happening and because of that our companies are expanding their requirement for office space is increasing all right so you're saying look at the larger picture maybe the recruitments or expansions are happening in multiples of lakhs and the layoffs are still probably lesser in number because you know ramesh your report also says that uh the unicorns are probably one of the one of the big ones to watch out for when it comes to office space demand leasing demand but i mean that ground is looking a little bit shaky have you changed your mind since when that report came out uh, the report is hardly 2 uh, 3 weeks uh, old uh, manisha so i have never seen this kind of uh, frantic pace uh, uh in terms of office space uh, demand uh, what we are seeing in the last uh, few months from uh, startups uh, our research uh, showed that uh, startups at least uh, around 22 million square feet of space uh, in the three years between 1920 and 21 and uh, this uh, momentum in 21 was close to uh, 20% uh, year on year growth compared to uh, 2020 uh, unicorns today occupy around uh, 14 million uh, square feet of uh, space and overall startups uh, occupy around 78 million square feet interesting anecdote last week tuesday a startup called up and said they said can you give us uh, 300 seats and uh, i'd passed on that uh, lead to one of my colleagues and uh, on friday when i checked with him what's happening on that they had already closed the deal So we're talking of uh, right. deal closures uh, of uh, between <laughs> like three to four days. This, Ramesh, uh, so that's a that's a good anecdote. I'm sorry, I have very short time left, but I get that point. Let me move to Gagan on the last question. Gagan, Gagan, I'm looking at a supply CRE matrix data says that we're going to add as much as 31 percent uh, of grade A office space in the top six cities by 2030. I mean, uh, yes, isn't that a lot of supply coming up? Is there demand for all of it? so uh, so if you look at it uh, if you look at the top 7 cities uh, and the numbers could vary depending on which ipc uh, you know what forum it is from we say uh, officially the grade a supply is about 650 million square feet and we are talking about 200 million square feet coming uh, more now if i were to say yes 31% addition is a big number uh, in the next 7 8 years uh, but there you know if you if you look at the report carefully there are two markets which really stand out so bangalore and pune both have about a 8 to 9% vacancy at present and the demand which is uh, the supply which is coming into both bangalore and pune is about 26% so these are two markets where i'll expect that the rents will remain very steady these markets are doing about 2 million square feet of leasing uh, every quarter so i think all the supply is going to be uh, absorbed very easily I think the markets with a little bit of challenge are going to be Hyderabad. Hyderabad has been one of the strongest markets, but there is about 50 million square feet coming up. Now that is almost 50 percent more than what is available today, mm-hmm. and uh, and Hyderabad is already at a 18 percent vacancy. Now, uh, so Hyderabad, okay. NCR, MMR are going to be markets 
where uh, you know clearly there is going to be a move to quality the better grade buildings and some of the buildings are going to be suffering but i think very very robust and uh, focus on pune and bangalore and that is where you will see a majority of the fdi money also headed to well i mean if i'm looking at the recent news that those are the two markets where you've had big leasing happening uh, byju's taking up about 5 and a half million square feet in bengaluru and of course mastercard taking up uh, about 4.3 million square feet in pune all right we're going to conclude on that note with everyone defending saying india office market uh, story looks strong and let's keep our fingers crossed that that resilience continues well foreign institutional investors when they're bringing in money are continuing to put 85 to 90% of that money flow is going to office assets so nirupa gagan and ramesh thank you very much for joining me today thank Thanks you manish for having us.